Tonight's top story, a settlement reached and more lawsuits loom. 19 families of Robb Elementary School victims are settling with the city of Uvalde for $2 million. But their attorneys are now going after nearly 100 officers and the school district in a lawsuit filed today. Tonight, our team is tackling these new legal developments. Kins 5 reporter Elisa Niaves is digging into the changes the city is promising to make. But we start with Kens 5 reporter Megan Reyna with this latest legal action. Megan? Well, you see, as Henry, we've learned, according to the Associated Press, this is a $500 million lawsuit against 92 DPS officers, Uvalde CISD, and several key former employees. These families say it's not about money, but gaining accountability. Lawsuits forthcoming uh, most um, most immediately um, against the state of Texas, which has done nothing at all. Two days before the two year mark of the massacre at Robb Elementary, new legal action on behalf of 19 families impacted by the tragedy. Justice hasn't been served. There's still failure across the board. The lawsuit filed Wednesday against 92 individual Texas DPS officers states they failed to use their advanced training while responding to the shooting, all while students and teachers were trapped inside classrooms. But this lawsuit will face several battles. This includes overcoming a judicial doctrine called qualified immunity, which protects law enforcement from liability in lawsuits unless they violated a constitutional right. But attorney Josh Koskoff believes they have a strong argument. But we think that this situation where kids, after all, are required to are required to lock down in their classrooms, their freedom is not is constrained. So, you know, in this situation, we feel like qualified immunity is not applicable. When we reached out to DPS regarding this lawsuit, they stated they do not discuss pending litigation. Meanwhile, Uvalde CISD, who is also cited in the suit, released a statement stating they remain committed to supporting the community and are open to exploring resolutions. My daughter sat there, you know, for 77 minutes crying, asking for help, you know. Well... <laughs> These guys get medals. And meanwhile, no criminal charges have been brought up against any law enforcement who responded to the shooting. But these families were able to gain some sort of closure when it came to that settlement with the city. I want to bring in my colleague Alicia Niaves with a deeper dive into this agreement. Alicia. Well, Megan, this settlement is separate from those lawsuits filed against DPS. This agreement is a year in the making. It includes new commitments by the city set to last for years to come. The settlement is the result of a year-long process involving victims' families and Uvalde officials. But there was an obvious systemic failure out there on May 24th. The whole world saw that. In the agreement, a wide range of promises from the city. First, the payout of $2 million for families. No amount of money is worth the children's, our lives of our children. The city also agreed to the following, creating a committee to work with families to establish a permanent memorial. It will be funded by the city, built in the town plaza in the heart of Uvalde. The city will establish May 24th as an annual day of remembrance for robbed victims. Mental health resources will continue to be provided for families and shooting survivors. There will be fitness for duty standards for Uvalde police officers developed alongside the U.S. Department of Justice. The city will ensure police provide enhanced training for current and future officers. And at Hillcrest Memorial Cemetery, where the victims are buried, there will now be regular maintenance by the city. At the same time, two new positions will be created on the cemetery's advisory board to be filled by victims' families. And the city of Uvalde will provide an updated list of all donations to the city in connection with the shooting and detail how these funds have been spent. Families thought it was best to make this announcement today as they prepare to mourn the two-year mark Friday. Just because we settled, you know, doesn't mean that we're going to stop, you know, fighting. And it's not about moving forward. It's trying to do the right thing, I guess, what you can say, you know, for the community. The city told us in a statement they're thankful they joined families in this agreement and they hope, they hope that it brings healing to the entire community. They ended by saying May 24th, 2022 is Uvalde's greatest tragedy. 
Live in the newsroom, Alicia Niaves, Ken's 5. Alicia, thank you. More coverage tonight. Uvalde School District is on the hunt for a new police chief. District officials confirming that Interim Chief Joshua Gutierrez has submitted his resignation. He replaced Chief Pete Arredondo, who was fired following intense scrutiny over his response to the shooting at Robb Elementary. The job has already been posted on the district's website. In a statement, the district said, quote, we are committed to finding a successor who will uphold the standards of safety and security that the community deserves, end quote. Meantime, a trustee on the Uvalde School Board has resigned. Tonight, the UCISD School Board accepting Annabelle White's immediate resignation. White represented the East Zone on the board for seven years and, with, and went through four superintendents. No reason was given during a letter that was read during the meeting. White wrote in part, quote, we have weathered many storms and have seen many changes in our district, end quote. As for what's next, tonight the board deciding to post the application to replace White and will begin interviewing candidates June 10th. By the 17th, they hope to make a decision. This person will serve for the next two years, which is White's remaining term. And on Friday, we will be remembering the 21 lives lost at Robb Elementary. We'll also show you how the community continues to heal two years after the deadly attack. Our coverage begins at 4.30 a.m. on 